Maybe you were thinking when you decided to click on this episode, the sludge machine. What is the sludge machine? It's not the sled machine. It's definitely not a piece of equipment. Who knows in fitness? Maybe it could be with how we go sometimes with kind of crazy things. But now the sludge machine is more of an idea or a concept or an understanding of something that shows itself not only in fitness and the business of fitness, but in lots of different endeavors in society. So let me give you some background before I dive into the sludge machine. So yesterday I had, I am a mentee and both a mentor at Ames Community College, one of the colleges. I teach at three different colleges on the side as an adjunct professor, uh, as a complement to my work as a full-time trainer and a business owner for another fitness business co-owner. And I love being a mentor. I love being a mentee. I think they're both really important. So I went from being a mentee and then the next hour after that, I had a therapy session. I have an awesome therapy, awesome therapist. Her name is Brittany. Big shout out to Brittany. She's been incredible. But I believe in working on yourself and having different out outlets outside of people just in your life. That's not their job to listen to all your BS all the time and all your feelings, and emotions all the time, partially, but you got to have other outlets. I think it's really important. So as I was chatting in both my mentee, being mentored relationship and my therapy relationship started snowballing into this idea of the sludge machine. And really this kind of came about because sometimes I feel really let down by other people. And this has happened quite a bit in my life now, not personally, but mostly professionally throughout my life. I think one of the things I talked to my therapist about was how I trust me a hundred percent of the time. I'm definitely not a person who has imposter syndrome about their performance or whether they're good enough. That That's never been my thing. I totally get it if that is. And that's something that I have a lot of sympathy for. But uh, for me personally, I, I always trust myself. I believe I'm good at what I do. I'm good at my jobs, all the different things that I do. But a lot of times in your work, you have things that need to get done or you pass things off to people to say, hey, I need you to get this done. Whatever that is, whatever you do in your life, there's some sort of delegation or waiting on something that you need to get done. And one of the problems with that, I think, is that often, for me at least, I always believe that I'm going to get the thing that needs to be done. If somebody needs something from me, I'm going to get back to them as quickly as possible. I'm going to make sure it gets done because it's critically important. I start thinking about maybe this is really important for this person. Maybe it's something that if I don't get this done for them, it's going to impact their mental wellness, their self-esteem. Maybe there's a lot riding on this, whatever it is. But I'd like to think that I think about the well-being of other people and the actions and decisions I make. And I've often felt throughout the course of my 24 years of being in this business that I get let down a lot, to be honest with you, with getting things done. And I think partially it's one of the reasons why I've always, I like having my own businesses, I like working in a silo many times because I feel like this just, it's very hard to get people to work at a level, a standard that you're looking for, and to also think about your feelings, which are really important. I think sometimes when we don't get back to people about stuff, we don't think that has an emotional toll on the person we're not getting back to. But this is a wraparound point for the sludge machine is I think we're all dealing with the sludge machine when it comes to this, the government, military. All things I've been a part of have been adjacent around those things growing up in life, all function in very much the sludge machine. They major in the sludge machine. As many of my colleagues would say academia is a dinosaur system. Things move slow in academia. I always hate when people say that, too, because like it can never change. It's very similar in the military, too, with people and in, in the institutions. It's like, why can't we do something about this? But that sludge is real. Which the sludge machine is also could be called the inertia machine, which is the definition essentially that we will procrastinate. We will take as long as it possibly takes to get something done until it actually absolutely has to be done. And it's working against all of us. And I was saying to my therapist how much that I get frustrated with that because I think it's so important to think outside of yourself. I mean, even if you feel that sludge, that inertia, Think about the well-being of other people and how 
let's say someone comes to your, you are looking to hire someone to do something and you never get back to them about actually a yes or no. Because for me as a person, I'm always like, it doesn't matter if it's a yes or no. Just tell me, give me the courtesy. The courage of courtesy is really important. That could be another podcast, right? The courage of courtesy. But we're all facing that sludge machine on some aspect. I just get very frustrated by it. And I think the fitness aspect of it as for personal trainers, group exercise instructors, health coaches, physicians, whoever whoever you are within the scope of health and wellness, as a service provider, you're up against the sludge machine. So 80% of your job as a service provider, especially in health, fitness, and wellness, is getting your clients, patients, whoever it may be, to show up on a regular basis for their own health and well-being. Clearly, that also affects your own bottom line, your financial well-being. But in general, it's a two-way street, right? Clients showing up for you affects your financial being, and them showing up for the session or whatever appointment is part of their total well-being. But clients, uh, say in my case, I, I have really great retention. I always retain clients. I'm very fortunate for that. Big shout out to all my clients. Great. But they're no different too, in the sense they're making a decision on a regular basis to show up with me. We mutually benefit from that. But I'm no idiot about it. I know that even my clients who have been amazing, they're facing that sludge machine too, that 80%, which is, hey, should I show up today? I'm not feeling the best today. Should I make it to my session with Darian? I stayed up late last night. I didn't sleep well. I'm just not feeling it. Whatever it is, we're all facing it. And as a service provider, we face it too. The desire to want to show up for our sessions. I face it as well. Like everyone has different abilities or reservoirs for how much work they can do. For me, it's about 10 to 12 sessions in a day. And these are half an hour sessions. It's not like I would never do an hour. I think it's just inefficient business-wise. And also you can accomplish very similar things in a short amount of time, maintaining a high degree of service and, and you're charging for it as well. But service providers face it too. For clients, the that sludge machine that is pulling you backwards all the time to not show up is a real thing. I'm not casting any blame on anyone. I think it's a two-way street, both service providers and clients, patients. Making that appointment is a mutual decision. And when both of you can show up and you both give your best effort, uh, you've accomplished pretty much 80 to 90% of what you can get out of it. The rest of it are things that are beyond your control with that. So in, in the context of as a trainer or a service provider, the context of uh, a client, all of those things have to come together. But it's important to recognize that everyone's facing that. So before I get into some ways to overcome the sludge machine, just some additional information. So one of the things that's really hard when you work in academia is getting students to show up regularly, to be engaged, and to turn in assignments. Right? If you're in academia, you know this. Right, You understand that getting students to perform at a high level or just perform, show up, is really difficult to do. That sludge machine is working overtime for students. And same thing, I put it on the instructors, professors, teachers. That sludge machine is working for you as well. And how well you're going to put forth a consistent effort. We're all trying to overcome this inertia that's constantly pulling us into this place of let's do the least amount possible for that. Gives you some context behind that as well. Now, whatever, whoever is listening to this, I'm sure there's plenty of situations where you've thought, I don't want to do this. And think about it for your service providers. Our clients are always facing this. They're literally always in the sludge machine. And that thing is just turning around like a washer dryer, throwing them inside out, and they're making that decision. Man, should I be here? Now, every once in a while, we have clients who just destroy the machine on a regular basis. For them, it's non-negotiable to show up for their appointment, session, whatever it may be. But I find this to be incredibly rare, which is why, I think, as a service provider, you really have to have a lot of clients. And I feel for my personal training colleagues, 
especially personal training, I'll talk about behavior. It's an incredibly difficult business to be in. Actually, I think it's one of the hardest businesses to actually go into, which is one of the reasons why myself and two of my colleagues, Debbie Bellinger and, and Dr. Aaron Nitschke, are creating this nationwide mentorship program because we desperately need to help our colleagues get through the time working in this industry. I've been in a long team, time, so have my colleagues. And the hardest thing to do is to build a stable clientele. It's so hard to do because that sludge machine is always trying to tear apart your business for both from our side and from the client side. So let's talk about some ways we could overcome the sludge machine to just whack it in the face and try to push it down and get rid of it as much as possible. It always will exist, but we can minimize the sludge in our lives. For my personal training students, colleagues, there's several ways to try to combat the sludge. And one is having awareness that your clients are going through this sludge machine and that you're going through it on a regular basis. I know for each of you, you've probably had plenty of times where you're like, I'm not sure I want to show up for this session. What's the energy going to be like during the session? What's my energy going to be like? What's their energy going to be like when they show up? So that's a thing, clients. And if you're one of my clients, you're listening to this, it's totally a thing. How you show up is really important. Now, me, I have a huge reservoir for people's energy. I am affected by my client's energy, but not enough that it feels like it really affects my session with clients. And even afterwards, I feel pretty good about it. And I'm fortunate to have amazing clients, really do. But that doesn't mean they don't come to their sessions not feeling great, not in a good mood, dealing with a lot of things in their lives. That's the human experience for that. But you have to be aware of how much of that energy that you're willing to consume. So understanding, being aware that machine exists and being aware of your reservoir. What is the reservoir that you have in order to be able to withstand that the energy that comes into the session? And again, also knowing that what can you do on a daily basis? Some trainers I know, they're not gonna do more than three to four sessions a day. They don't have any more to give beyond that. And that's their boundary. And I totally respect that. I totally respect that. And whatever works for you. For me, like I said, 10 to 12 is pretty much my limit. When I get to 12, I am just destroyed. I'm sorry, whoever gets me at 12, I'm, I'm pretty much baked, really baked at that point. I'm giving my best. But obviously, I'm not as energetic or as, as optimal as I would be as my first three or four sessions in the morning. So tip number one is just know you're in the machine and that your clients are in it as well. And this is a factor that each of you are working extremely hard to make it to your session together. And two, knowing that you need to understand your energy and how much energy, what is your reservoir or how, what is your limit for, for showing up? It's really important. Number three, a way to counteract the sludge machine is to structure your business in a way that takes away as many of the barriers of sludge for that. So what does that mean? That means how do you structure your session? So one, I think I mentioned before, our sessions seems great because if you're making 80, $90 an hour, you think, wow, this is a lot of money. But I counteract that and say, how many sessions can you actually do when they're an hour? Because it's so draining to work with anyone for an hour, especially when you're instructing, talking, taking in energy is why I moved all my sessions to 30 minutes uh, years ago. And actually a good colleague of mine was an inspiration. And I remember he would tell me, say, hey, listen, always do 30 minutes. It's time management for clients. It's time management for you. And it's energy management for both sides for that. So time management, most clients can do 30 minutes. It's like the concept, I can do anything for 30 seconds. And you can extrapolate and say, I can do anything for 30 minutes. 30 minutes goes by in a blink, right? And clients mostly will show up on time for 30-minute sessions. But once you get into an hour, you get a lot of time slippage. What I mean by that, you get a lot of kind of wasted time where clients will show up 10 minutes late, 5, 10 minutes, 15 minutes late. It's hard to have someone work diligently for an hour straight with exercise, physical activity, movement, whatever it may be. 
it just feels like a larger hurdle. So I always lower the hurdle. And my business model is always 30 minutes. And that 30 minutes is going to be action-packed with a lot of things that I know that need to get done within the time that clients give me. And quality interaction, quality in programming, flexibility with programming, those things. So setting up those 30 minutes, I'm able to train more people, have more energy, create more time management and energy management for that. So structuring the frequency of your session, the, the time of your sessions important. The other thing to, the next thing to help to decrease the sludge machine is also setting up realistic expectations for how often your clients were showing up. So part of the sludge machine too is the fact that you need to um, realize that clients are only going to show up probably one to two times a week or have a few of them show up three times a week. The unicorns are four and above. A lot of my students, again, if you end up listening to this, I always tell them when we're going through our certified personal trainer prep course that this idealized version of training almost doesn't exist where you're going to train one body part every session. You may do that for yourself. That's not realistic for clients. You're going to see them four or five, six times a week. That's just not happening. And any reputable trainer who's been doing it a while knows what I'm talking about. And statistically, the national average is one to three sessions a week, but more than likely it's one to two sessions a week. So one way to get rid of the sludge too is to over session. What does over session mean? Talk to your clients and say, hey, I think we should set for three sessions with the idea that maybe we'll get two in for that because clients do cancel and they have different things that come up out of nowhere. You need to be sensitive to that. But what happens if you have a once a week client and that happened? I have a few once a week clients, just we can't help it. It is the scheduling, but I try my hardest not to do that and explain that to them. But when they have once a week and they cancel, there goes two weeks. If they have twice a week, they cancel one of them, at least get one in. Or if you have three times a week and they cancel one of them, at least you got two in. See what I mean? Like sometimes over sessioning or over scheduling is good. Or have a flex day and say, hey, I'd like to have this available just in case something changes during the week for that. Another option to decrease the sludge is either hybrid or live virtual based sessions. My business, 100% virt live virtual. I enjoy that. And you have to figure out if that's something that you're interested in doing. But I have found for the clients that I have for this, they really enjoy it primarily because time is the greatest currency. It saves them a mega ton of time. A lot of the sludge-based barriers are based off of time. If clients are training an hour with you and they have to come see you at a gym, let's say they live 15, 20 minutes away, the traffic and all that, we're looking at a two-hour round trip. A lot of people just don't have that time for that. But if it could be virtual, you could save literally an hour and a half right there. So you've saved an hour and a half of their time and you saved an hour and a half of your time. And now I could fill that two hour block. Let's say if I'm going to see a client, I used to do in-home training. Let's apply it to me or for you. I did one client for two hours. That's business-wise, not a great business tactic. But when I do virtual, I could stack four clients in that two hour slot. So I made more money. I met a lot of different people in a short amount of time. I managed my energy, my finances, and my business model structure for that. So one way, so another way to combat that sludge is to maybe think about how you have your sessions virtual, in person. Again, I'm sure there's some of you are listening to this that go, Darian, I don't want anything to do with live virtual. I like being around people in person. Great, great. But just understand there's a reality of that. There's only so much you can do when your sessions are an hour and you're in person with people, right? You are essentially, unless you're making an, a gigantic amount of money per session for the hour, which is only going to happen, but actually really not going to happen unless you work for yourself. If you work for a gym, they're taking a good percentage of that. Even if you're at lifetime or something, you're making 120, the gym's taking a big chunk of that. You're not going to make as much as you think for that. Especially for all of my fellow trainers who work for themselves, cut down the sessions. Think about offering either hybrid service or live virtual to decrease the sludge. The clients will show up more often. My 
retention rate has gone through the roof and re well, frequency rate for clients showing up regularly has gone through the roof ever since I switched to this about seven years ago. I do have cancellations still, but it's much less, it's infrequent, the cancellations versus when I was in person, it was way more cancellations, live virtual, a lot less cancellations because I have 30 minutes and also because I'm saving the client time. I'm saving myself time. I'm actually making way more money and because I can stack more people, more sessions when I'm doing that. So that is a way to punch and box out the sludge for that. The other aspect to think about with this sludge machine is that on the other side of this are actual people, right? So you have to be understanding that in this machine that we're in, this inertia, this box of inertia that there are feelings related to that. And I, a strategy is always be understanding when things change with clients, with appointments, railing against clients, not showing up as much as you'd like them to do only increases your stress level and also doesn't do anything for you. Clients would get defensive if you try to call them on not showing up regularly. But it's just not my thing, honestly. It's not my thing. My other strategy for this is have as many clients as possible. I've toyed around with having a capacity at some point. I'm like, man, I can't train any more people because this will like activate the sludge in me. It's, oh, I'm going to have all these people. It's going to be hard for me to show up all the time for that. But what I have found that's because that sludge machine is so strong on both sides. And let's talk about the client side. Because it's so strong, you're not going to get 100% of your clients to show up 100% of the time. You have to have a large clientele because you got to account for that drop that happens here and there with it. And that, again, you're getting people showing up one to two times a week. You need to have at minimum at least 15 to 20 people in order for that to be a financially viable business for you, more than likely. Also, to counteract the sludge that's going to happen. The other day, I was Monday nights I work. I don't work Monday mornings. And I have the opposite schedule on Fridays. I work in the morning. I don't work in the afternoon and evening. These are times I give myself time to just do whatever, just goof off, relax, watch stuff. And all of my sessions canceled on Monday, about four or five of them I had. So I had a day off. You know what I did? I thought, man, unexpected day off. And it doesn't mean that my clientele world is falling apart. No, it just means that's what happened that day. And I could choose to be upset about it, or I could choose what I did, which was go, I have more time with my family that evening. I can watch Monday Night Football, actually the whole entire game, versus just the second, late second quarter on. What are the positives to that? But you have to have a lot of clients to withstand that too. I have a very large clientele, so I could withstand an unexpected day off for that. So combating the sludge, got to have a lot of clients. It's a big part of that takes time to build that, but certainly having a large clientele is one way to combat the inevitable, the inevitability that clients cancel from time to time and people miss their appointments from time to time. Things come up from time to time. If you have a small clientele, it will destroy your business. If not, if you have a large clientele, it's an unexpected day off or time to do other things. And it's taken me a while to get to this point for a long period of time, but it's really important to understand that there are a lot of strategies you have to employ to deal with that machine that's always happening there. So uh, I want to give my wife a big shout out on this, Michelle, because she inspired this. We were talking about this along with my mentor, my online teaching mentor, Eden Walker, and my therapist, Brittany Claypool, and my wife, Michelle, who all inspired me to have this podcast. I'm always very inspired by the wonderful people in my life. And I think this sludge machine, it, the concept's really important. And one we don't talk about enough is that we're all struggling to show up regularly in our lives, not just in our fitness businesses, but just in our lives. And you have to have make adjustments. A good coach makes adjustments at halftime. And you're always making adjustments instead of halftime in your business. You're always making adjustments because the sludge is real. That inertia is always pulling you towards the baseline of the path of least resistance. So to all of my fitness and wellness colleagues, 
be please be aware of this sludge machine. Understand that it's working constantly to keep you down. And you have to have good systems in place, good strategies in place to overcome that sludge machine. And if you can do this, uh, you will be very successful. Because again, probably 80% of combating this sludge machine is getting your clients to show up and getting yourself to show up on a regular basis. A lot of times we like to think this is the client's issue, but it's also the service provider issues. I can't tell how many times that I hear stories about trainers who don't show up on time, cancel their sessions all the time. You contributed to the sludge. You are the downfall of your own business. It's not always the client's fault or they didn't show up enough. Actually, quite a bit of times it's the trainer's fault for not being professional enough, not being entertaining enough. And that I want to talk about a second not having their business acumen, understanding what it takes to have a good business long-term. These are things that trainers often fail at, and then they blame the client on it. But it's your fault as well. You have to be a good business person. And as I said, entertainment. I think one of the another kind of bonus sludge killer is the entertainment value. You know, I have a good trainer colleague, a friend, his name's Sean, and I hired him to be one of the trainers at a club I ran for almost 10 years in Las Vegas. He was one of our best trainers and just a great guy. And I was so pumped when he told me he was moving here to Colorado from Las Vegas. And he literally lives like a five minute walk from me. So we hang out like once a week. And one of the things he, I intuitively knew, but I feel like he really brought to light was the entertainment value for trainers. The entertainment value is really high and probably a good second podcast episode, right? The entertainment value of training is really important. But he highlighted that he really loves watching football because of the entertainment value. It's a really high percentage if you look at the ratio. And I think for training is very similar to that. Um, part of killing the sludge machine is being interesting and having high entertainment value during your sessions. So I actually want to save this. I think this is a good next podcast and something that I think would be great for my fellow trainers to look at kind of the far side of fitness is looking at the entertainment value of your session. And this has nothing to do with being fake. I hate that. No, you should never be fake during your sessions, but you should be interesting, like intuitively interesting. So that's a topic. So this one, the sludge machine, what it is and how to kill it as much as possible. It keeps coming back. It's like a terrible horror movie. It's Friday the 13th, 10 or Nightmare on Elm Street 6, whatever it is, just keeps coming back. We don't want it, but it's part of our lives. So we can be better at combating this sludge machine. And I gave you some ways to do that. So thank you everyone for listening to this episode of The Far Side of Fitness.